Mr. Tycoon's Darling Wife Chapter 5 Strong Backings When Han Wu Ting's car was far into the distance, Zhao Li Fei turned towards her friend with a deep scowl. She crossed her arms and glared daggers from her eyes. Yang Ru Ting shrank back, knowing she was in for an earful. Another blind date? This is the fifth time this month, Zhao Li Fei bit out, her temper slightly rising. No matter how many times she told Yang Ru Ting that she was fine being single, the stubborn woman wouldn't listen. Blind date after blind date, and at the least expected times too. But Fei Fei, you're going to be lonely when I leave for my trip next month, she whined, grabbing Jolly Fei's arm and swaying her side to side. Jolly Fei sighed, pinching the spot between her brow. Like I've told you a billion times before, I'm fine being single. I like my peace and quiet. Jolly Fei frowned. She knew Yang Wuqing was looking out for her. The blind dates came from a good place, not a malicious one. But Jolly Fei was beginning to grow annoyed at her friend's persistence. What's wrong with being single? But Fei Fei! No buts, Jolly Fei interrupted hailing down a cab to take her home. Yang Ruqing pouted upon seeing how eager she was to leave. Don't leave me yet. You might not be lonely, but I most certainly am. Like a child eager to spend more time with her parents, Yang Ruqing clung under her. Jolly Fei laughed at her childish friend. Yang Ruqing's pout was absolutely adorable, and if she was a man, she'd surely do anything to please her. But she wasn't and pouts didn't work on her. My dear, you have a lot more friends. But I like you the most. Yang Ruqing childishly stomped the ground, her silver anklets twinkling. The long list of friends and acquaintances that Yang Ruqing had was endless. It was incredible how she was able to make so many friends, have constant plans, yet still have time for herself. Because Yang Ruqing was the only daughter of the most prestigious and wealthiest family in the country, many people clung onto her like flies. They always sought after Yang Ruqing's presence in social gatherings because it would significantly boost their status. But Jolly Fei was different. She didn't follow after Yang Ruqing like a lost puppy. Instead, she was independent and very selective of her friends, which forced Yang Ruqing to cling onto her instead. Don't be mad at me, Fei Fei. I only wanted the best for you. Yang Ruqing widened her eyes and jutted her lips out into a deeper pout. Jolly Fei chuckled and patted her head. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Come to my house and I'll lecture you a bit more. Then we can watch the show you really liked. After going back to Jolly Fei's condo apartment, and binge-watching an entire season of a variety show centered on blind dates while throwing popcorn at the screen, Yang Ruqing was finally burnt out. Slumped on the couch, she was in a deep slumber. She slept like a child with her body curled into a ball and arms tucked underneath her face. Jolly Fei chuckled at the sight and placed a heavy blanket over her. Yang Ruqing was the type to get hot easily, so the air conditioner was always turned on but Jolly Fei was still scared that Yang Ruqing might catch a cold, since she got sick easily. After tying up her long hair, Jolly Fei began to clean up the mess they've made. If this was the Jolly Fei from two years ago, she would have left the chores to the house cleaner, but Jolly Fei figured it was best to not be so lazy. She was 23 this year, and a grown adult. Being able to clean the house and do her laundry was something she mastered the minute she moved out of her parents' house but she didn't. Jolly Fei acted like a spoiled brat, one that no one loved but had to get along with if they wanted good things in life. She knew she could never fix the sins that she had committed in the past, the friendships and relationships she had severed, but she swore to herself she would definitely try to make positive changes in her present and future life. When Jolly Fei was sweeping the popcorn bits into the dustbin, her phone went off. Looking at the contact, she frowned. Her mother was calling her, and that woman only did it when she wanted something from her. 
It has been a couple of months since they've last spoken. And that was when her mother tried to splash boiling hot water onto Jolly Faye's face. She was quick and sidestepped the attack, or else her face would have been permanently scarred. Her mother never liked her, and after what happened to Jolly Fay, the hatred was evident. Jolly Fay hesitated to pick up the call, but on the last ring, she did. The minute she did, her mother's voice blared out of the phone. Why did it take so long for you to pick up? Are you trying to disrespect your mother? The woman screeched over the phone, her voice raising louder and louder. Jolly Fay held the phone away from her ears. Wang Wali rambled and yelled about Jolly Fei's hesitation of picking up the call and making her wait longer than needed. After a few minutes of Wang Nuali's rambling, Jolly Fei couldn't handle it anymore. Mother, dearest, please reach your conclusion soon. You brat! Yes, yes, I'm a disgrace and you shouldn't have given birth to me 23 years ago on November 21st. We've already established that. Jolly Fay already memorized her mother's insults. Every brutal stabbing of reality was given by her mother. The woman was ruthless and showed no love to her eldest daughter. Instead, she focused all her attention and love onto her prized younger sister, the perfect star of the Zhao family, Zhao Linghua. Your younger sister's birthday is coming up. Show some face to us. You must show up to the banquet. Wang Wali bit out. As much as she despised her eldest daughter with every inch of her soul, Jolly Fei was inevitably extremely useful. She was able to have the terrifying backing of Zhao Moyao, the monarch of the Zhao Corporation and the man with the highest shares in the company. Wang Wali hated to admit it, but this brat was smart. Cultivating a good relationship with her grandfather at the tender age of four, she had a perfectly safe spot in his cold heart. Are you sure you want me there? I can transfer this call to grandfather, since that's your ultimate plan. Jolly Fay hummed, nonchalantly inspecting her nails. Wang Nuoli nearly lost her composure. This brat was simply too smart. Of course, her ultimate purpose in inviting Jolly Fay was to lure out Zhao Moyao. Having such a grand, influential, and powerful man show up at her youngest daughter's birthday would bring endless benefits that no money could afford. Out of all his five granddaughters, Jolly Fei was Zhao Moyao's favorite. Wang Wali didn't know how Jolly Fei was able to curry his favor and adoration, but she had effortlessly done so. If it wasn't for her strong backings, Wan Wali wouldn't have spared Jolly Fei a second glance. Chapter 6 Push to Her Lows Don't act so haughty and spoiled, you brat! I raised you for 23 years with my own blood, sweat, and tears! Wan Wali slammed her manicured hand onto the glass table beside her. Mother, please. You only held me once as a baby and passed me off to different nannies until I could walk. And when I did, you found other nannies for me. Jolly Fei rolled her eyes at Wang Nuali's melancholic story. It was no rumor that Wang Nuali didn't love her eldest daughter. Jolly Fei was born when Wang Nuali's relationship with Zhao Nanming was extremely rocky. Both of them were reluctant to marry each other. After heavy pressures from the elders on having a child, she was forced to sleep with him. For Wang Nuali, a woman who was used to having everything go her way, that night was brutal torture. Not only was she stripped of her clothes, but also her dignity. And when Jolly Fei was conceived, she was furious. After all of that torture, she had to try again. But Zhao Linghua had it easier. She was born from a night of love and consensual sex. How dare you show an attitude towards your mother! I might not have raised you, but I carried you in my stomach for nine antagonizing months while I couldn't drink my beloved wine. I pushed your big head out of me, screaming and crying. Show some respect. Wang Wuli had reached the brink of her patience. Sometimes she wondered where she went wrong with her eldest child. 
Wan Luoli harbors the delusion that throwing nannies and money at Jolly Fei would somehow compensate for the lack of parental presence. When Jolly Fei was a child, all she wanted was her mother's love and attention, but Jolly Fei received nothing except glares and spiteful words. Growing up, she was taught that she would never be loved by her mother. Xiaoling's birthday is two weeks from now. I expect you to be there, Wang Luoli added on, when she realized how quiet Jolly Fei had become. Hmm, this child finally had some senses talked into her. After a few seconds of awkward silence, Wang Luoli felt a vein pop out. Was she even listening? You brat, did you hear me? Yes, mother, I heard you, Jolly Fei sighed. You better come to the banquet. If not, your father and I will show up at your house. If I have to drag you there, kicking and screaming, I will. Wang Luoli seized, nearly throwing the glass of wine in her hand. Little did she know, Jolly Fei had long moved out of the house bought by her parents. Besides, you know how much Xiao Ling loves you. And just like that, Jolly Fei hung up. Zhao Linghua loves Jolly Fei? <laughs> that must have been the joke of the century. Zhao Linghua wouldn't love her older sister even if her life depended on it. Born as a piano prodigy with hundreds of rewards lining her bookshelves, Zhao Linghua was already the most beloved daughter. In Zhao Linghua's eyes, she only cared about relations, if there was a benefit in having it. When she had discovered her older sister had fallen from the Zheng's grace, Zhao Linghua was quick to discard Zhao Lifei. If you're going to the banquet, you need a suitable partner that will blow that stupid Zheng Tianyi out of the waters. Zhao Lifei jumped, nearly dropping her phone, when she heard Yang Ruqing's determined voice. Turning around, she was surprised to see she was awake. Sitting up with half of the blanket on her shoulders, Yang Ruqing tiredly yawned. Good luck finding a man like that. Zheng Tianyi is one of the three wealthiest men in the country. Jolly Fei sighed, tossing her phone onto the couch. I'm sorry for waking you up. Was my conversation that loud? Jolly Fei tried to change the topic. She picked up her broom and went back to sweeping the floor. No, I'm just a really light sleeper. Besides, who could sleep when they hear Wang Luoli's nasal voice? Yang Ruqing scoffed. Jolly Fei laughed at her friend, happy she had someone on her side. Yang Ruqing stared at Jolly Fei sweeping the floor. It was a soothing sight that made her look like a gentle housewife and not the woman she used to be two years ago. You should raise the pay of the cleaner and have her come three times a week. It's not good to put so much strain on your back. What if your hands get rough and tough from all this cleaning? Yang Ruqing worriedly said. Jolly Fei finished her last sweep and glanced up with a small smile. A woman should at least be good at something. Cleaning can be my skill. Besides, my cleaner recently gave birth. She needs a rest. Yang Ruqing had a wry smile. She couldn't believe the massive changes in one person within the span of two years. She wanted to know what really happened on the night that Jolly Fei placed down her crown as queen of the socialites. You fool, you're so good at many things besides cleaning. Only because Wang Luli and Zhao Nanming wanted me to be good at those things, Jolly Fei nonchalantly said while placing the broom and dustpan back into the closet. Yang Ruqing frowned. Don't lie to me, I know you enjoy those skills as well. Jolly Faith smiled as she walked to the kitchen. Perhaps to some extent, yes. But I was a child whose ambition and dreams were shaped by Wang Luoli and Zhao Nanming's desire to have the perfect child. She took out the ingredients for dinner. But you were so good at piano, Yang Ruqing muttered under her breath, and because Jolly Fei was so far, she didn't hear her. When she noticed how quiet Yang Ruqing was, Jolly Fei turned around to see her friend lost in thought. She shook her head as she started to cut the ingredients. After a few minutes of quiet but oddly comfortable silence, Yang Ruqing finally stood up from her position. Yang Ruqing wanted to pry more and force Jolly Fei to finally reveal the horrible things that had happened when she wasn't in the country. But Yang Ruqing knew it wasn't the wisest move. 
Although Jolly Fay would never admit it, there was a heavy cloud of somberness around her. Whenever she was alone, her thoughts were dark and depressing. Yang Ruqing noticed that half of Jolly Fay's smile contained a hidden layer of pain, sadness, and betrayal. It pained Yang Ruqing to see Jolly Fay in such a pitiful state. Sure, Jolly Fay still kept her pride and head high, but she had lost whatever self confidence she used to own. Yang Ruqing missed seeing the girl who confidently laughed, wore anything she liked, and did things without a care in the world. Yang Ruqing fumed to herself. That bastard, Jing Tianyi, really broke her. She lifted her gaze from the couch she was sitting on to stare at Jolly Fei, whose back was turned. There was a wonderful smell in the air that could only come from Jolly Fei's amazing cooking skills. As Yang Ruqing watched Jolly Fei cook, she couldn't help but sigh and feel sympathy for her friend. Jolly Fei had her entire life built around the very man that chattered her. From a young age, she was drilled on how to become his pillar of support, how to manage a multi billion corporation, how to handle the paperwork, how to fulfill his position when he was absent, how to be his safe haven, and how to be the perfect wife. All of her training and endless nights of sleep deprivation completely shattered within the span of six months. In just six months, Zhen Tianyi had pushed Jolly Fei to her lowest for a random woman he happened to fall in love with.